Hey there bleeping jeepers, this is Tyler. This week we're doing a walk around of this 1951 uh, Willys pickup utility. This is my friend Robert. We've been friends since we were little kids and uh, we kind of did, he did a, a restore on this way back when we were in high school, decades and decades ago. And uh, we're going to take you on a little bit of a walk around. All right, Robert, tell us where this truck came from. Well, uh, back in the early day, uh, I think it was originally brought into my family by my grandfather. Uh, he used it on the farm in uh, hauling hay, doing uh, mediocre chores around the farm. Uh, when he passed away, my father inherited it, and uh, I grew up with this Jeep. Uh, beat it up quite a bit, took it up in the mountains with Tyler. Uh, we were not nice to this truck, not as nice as we should have been, given, yeah. given the classic that it is. Uh, I even remember uh, taking it in the washboards and a lot of the, the, the dips in, in the road. I'd take it at kind of full force and uh, Tyler would put his head into the roof because the, the springs in the, the seat were so good. No seat belts in this, by the way. It's, no. a, it's a 51, so no seat belts. A 1951 Willys Overland, yep. Uh, I have not found many flatbeds there out on uh, Google, so... We're hoping that maybe if any of you viewers have, uh, have pictures of or know somebody that has the flatbed, that you'll post in the comments below or post on our Facebook page. Um, Robert is looking to do another restore on this and he's interested to find other owners who have the factory flatbed. There just doesn't seem to be very many of them around. Uh, what was your grandfather's name? Lance Hyatt. Lance Hyatt. And your dad's name was Gene Hyatt? Gene Hyatt. So this is third generation now and our cameraman thinks maybe someday he's going to get it so it'll be fourth generation. Maybe. We'll see. Let's do a walk around. All right, so let's go over a little bit about the original restore way back when we were in high school. Uh, tell us about the bed. This is the original bed as far as the metal goes, right? Right. Yeah, so this was about uh, back in 1993, maybe 92. I think in 92. 92. Uh, we had to take out the original boards. They were just rotten as can be. And on the low budget, farmer budget. High school kid budget. High school kid budget. <laughs> I broke out some plywood and uh, restore it with plywood. I actually uh, put some uh, varnish over the top of it. I remember there being a super thick layer of like Thompson's water seal or varnish right. or something over this plywood. Right. But this does have all the original side side panels with a few modifications. Um, Which yeah. happens on the farm. It does, it does. Let's go take a look at the interior. So during the restoration, uh, one of the things we did was rebuilt the seat. Tyler's company at the time the guy I worked for anyways, yeah, was, was the one that rebuilt it. So the place I was working at the time, the upholstery shop, uh, I tore down this seat. It's the original frame, but all the old mohair and cotton and everything went in the garbage. It was clear full of mouse nests from being out on the farm. And then uh, the guy that I worked for rebuilt the foam and then ended up doing the cover. I hadn't worked for him for very long, so I was not allowed to do the cover yet. I had to do the crap work, <laughs> the dirty work. So part of my low budget uh, restoration, uh, we had some carpet left over from when we recarpeted some rooms in our house. And I actually screwed it down to the floor. This is house carpet. Yeah. House carpet, yep. And it's still there. It probably needs to be redone again. We did, during the first uh, paint job, the red, we also had a, the brown redone. The brown's actually still in pretty good condition. Brown looks good. Yeah. Brown looks really good. Robert rebuilt the door panels. I think we did this. The yep. We did this in the upholstery shop, these armrests. I think one of my most favorite features is, is the, the door opening. This is how you open the door by pushing that button. Pretty cool. Yeah, cool cool vintage, vintage iron. We added uh, a new steering wheel. The thing is, is the steering wheel that I got was one of those that you can drive with handcuffs on. So it was actually really, really teeny. Does this even have power steering? No, no power steering. So how'd that work out for you? It was pretty tough. <laughs> and about a month later, I had come home and my dad said, oh, by the way, I replaced your steering wheel. He said he couldn't drive it, so we put a bigger steering wheel on. <laughs> I never did find that small steering wheel. 
Yeah, he probably threw it in the scrap pile. So not completely 100% original in here. Um, I think the, the turn indicator was, was an aftermarket mm -hmm. you guys put on. Uh, yep. This originally had manual windshield wipers that you pushed a little lever and he installed uh, an electric windshield wiper out of like a CJ3A, I think. Right. So the same time period, more or less, but was not original to this. Um, tell us about the headliner. The headliner, we went, uh, me and a buddy went down to a junkyard and found like an old Camaro or something and had some custom diamond tuck headliner. This is a black vinyl diamond tuck. We ripped it out of that Camaro and, uh, and uh, Put it in here. made a good addition onto this. It, <laughs> it prevented Tyler's head from being hit so hard. Kind of quiet, quiets it down a little it bit does. too. Yeah. So, not really original, but hey, we were in high school, right? So I do have a manual switch in here that I can turn on that turns on my white reverse lights. So your reverse lights are manual? Yep, I have the switch right there. At least you have reverse lights, right? That's right. Original drivetrain, still sporting the, I believe it's a T90 transmission and a T18 twin stick. With a Hercules motor? With a Hurricane. It's got hurricane. the Hurricane motor. So all original drivetrain. Original axles, original transmission transfer case and motor. Still going pretty strong. Any idea how many miles? So there's 50,297 original miles on it. How do you guys like that? A 1951 with 50,000 original miles. <laughs> Clean one owner, right? <laughs> That's right. Third generation one owner. That's awesome. This Jeep was originally purchased by my uh, grandfather, Lance Hyatt, when he passed away. My father, Gene Hyatt, uh, got it, and it was unanimous that because I restored this Jeep when I was a teenager, that uh, I was to inherit this Jeep. Um, so we're looking at possibly the next generation that's going to own this Jeep. Could it be me? If you're lucky. Yeah, if I'm lucky. It's going to be 1951. Lucky. If it's still running. That's right. It, well, if it's it not, you're going to get it running. That's yeah, part of what... Go. Yeah, I'll fix it up. And this is Mason Hyatt. This is Mason. He's your oldest, right? He is my oldest. All right. Any single, ladies? Just so you know. <laughs> hey. He did our filming today, and Mason has a YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? I do. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Mason Hyatt. Super easy to find. C forward slash Mason Hyatt. C forward slash Mason okay. Hyatt. Go check out some of his videos. He was our cameraman today. Did a good job. Uh, thank you. All right. <laughs> That's it for this week. We want to thank Robert for letting us do the walk around of this really cool vintage iron. If any of you guys have uh, similar vehicles, some of the old flat fenders, some of the old military Jeeps, we want to see some pictures of those on our Facebook page and uh, post them up. I'll put a picture of this on the Facebook page so you guys can comment. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Cool stuff. Now, when I first, uh, I got a, a new, uh, so I got a new st steering wheel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>